everyone, and welcome back to Empire Total War with the American Civil War mod last time around. Robert E. Lee marched in and took Washington, D.C. and the state of Maryland. Um, and uh, yeah, what we have today Sir? is... Sir. Jackson's not ready to move out yet. Well, he doesn't have... Sir. Next turn he will actually be able to move out. Uh, and next turn... Beauregard will be able to move out and he will be able to attack Chicago. At this point, it looks as though the campaign will be very quickly over, which I, th I don't know. I think I went for about 20 videos for my Union campaign, so I'm not entirely sure what, what the difference here is. Anyways, this video, we're going to go ahead and start off with... John Hood and his troops and go ahead and attack uh, this unit here which for some reason did not uh, protect the capital of the province uh, but instead decided to stay out in the middle of nowhere so that is what we're going to do right let's cleanse this province so they have 2,000 men and I have uh, about 1500 my men are veterans though because they uh, they got veterancy fighting to tape no I don't know actually where they got their veterancy I think I demanded the surrender of the Kansas territory I don't think these guys have hmm I can't remember anyways we're gonna go ahead and fight this battle it should be in favor of us because we've got artillery they don't so I can blast them away also have more cavalry and we've seen how devastating cavalry can be in this mod if it gets um, gets into them with uh, sort of gets flank get the flank on them or attack them from the back so yeah let's go ahead and fight Felix champion and his uh, ragged bend of Union soldiers and we can see the wide open plains of Kansas um, I think what I'll do actually is, um, well, I think a big part is actually going to be cavalry charges to my victory, but I'm going to try to do what I think the mod makers intended with the cavalry units, which was you to, um, you actually use them as dragoons, move forward, dismount and use them, and not sort of ride into uh, the enemy, since cavalry charges weren't that common in the American Civil War. So we'll we'll try that and hopefully that will not end in a disaster. So I don't have a lot of actual... No, it's, okay, so this territory right here is really hard to traverse so I'm gonna have the line infantry actually pull back and then we're gonna have the Union troops then will allow them to march through the very difficult terrain and you know what we'll keep the cavalry back and then as the uh, the cavalry the enemy cavalry I mean the enemy oh did I get all the cavalry now great so when the enemy actually goes in to attack my line infantry suddenly my cavalry will turn up on the flanks Boy, those cannons are really loud, aren't they? Didn't I check the effect last time? Or not last time, but... Right, the enemy cavalry is coming in, so... We'll charge them. I'll have the second unit swinging from the back. And you know what? The Union guys even pushed right through that unit, so... Uh, I'll have some come through here and then the other one comes and attacks from the back so my shoot unit should be able to beat them um, pretty well almost on its own since it got one chevron but uh, piling on three units I don't think uh, the unit minds um, there are some walls that I can actually hide my units behind and right now it looks like the Union's gonna come through here. 
question is how well the thing is if I put my men down here they the range of fire will basically go up to this point here where the kind of ridge goes so they won't w w they won't have a great arc of fire what we'll do then is I guess we can move this guy here and this guy over to the hills over here so we'll avoid putting any units down below here where they most likely won't be able to fire that well. This is going to be a pretty nasty shot. This unit has almost already lost a hundred men. My cavalry should have won their battle, yes. And they seem to have completely annihilated them, I can't see any Union cavalrymen left at all. They've got this one in the back. And I kinda wanna get rid of them before I get my cavalry into action. So it seems like they're all passing around here. They're gonna come here and then bunch up probably going straight for this unit right here. And not so much for this one over here, which means it's probably better to move this one forward. But I don't want to move it forward yet. But they're gonna have one coming through, coming through this area as well. We're firing on the 43rd. We're firing on the 36th. We'll let them get their guys firing on us and get them in a position where they're um, where they're basically stuck fighting us. And then we push in the troops to the flanks so they don't, so they're unable to move uh, those extra men to protect their flanks. So it looks like the Pots and Rangers should be able to move up pretty well. And we can put them down here to actually protect them in one, one in each pen. And if, if uh, the enemy starts to beat these guys, they do have the possibility to retreat behind the walls. And I could switch this cannon to fire canister. How far does the canister reach? It actually reaches. Pretty sure they'll be massacred by that canister since it's... How many guns are there? Eight? Eight guns. So now they're pushing two units. With a lot more firepower down upon us. So this unit... It's gonna have to move back pretty darn soon. I'm gonna go ahead and tell these guys to uh, jump off. Yeah, these guys are losing a lot of manpower at this point. So fall back behind. This one also. I'm gonna tell this one to fall back as well. So the guys are off their horses up to the front. Start pushing flank fire on these guys. How's the canister going? I'll order them to, to fire at a certain area. So that uh, they don't fire for the flank. That's bloody effective. And as soon as I take control of the cannons, giving them orders where to fire, we can clearly see a very big improvement of uh, the casualties sustained by the enemy. Looks like the partisan rangers were too late. They're hiding there behind the wall, but they're not actually being able to um, to shoot any enemies. Shit, this unit's coming real close. Most of those shots are gonna go over the unit. If 
I don't aim it correctly. Is it the sharpshooters? Yes. Let's actually tell them to aim at the closest flank here. So there's some fire coming down here as the swarms. I thought it was the swarms, it's not the swarms. The regiment is pushing up to deal with the Pashas and Rangers. Uh, these guys gained chevron already. There's not a lot of units left here. And there they're routed. Right, we've got another one. Union reg regular unit. Uh, let's fire for this one. Break that one in two. And I think it's time for the Vindette Cavalry to move up. Oh, one of my infantry units is now pulling back. The one that was facing the Swabs is pushing back. Parchers and Rangers are not doing that hot. We're going to tell them to fall back, get back on their horses. Yes, this one was broken, that's nice. Oh, these guys have rallied. But I'm not sure if I dare move them up this close to fight the, uh, the swarms again. Uh, switch to explosive and fire this one. Oh, look at that, they've hidden a unit over here. And it's facing my cavalry as well. Shit. Pretty clever of the AI there. Even though I don't think that was by design. I think we're gonna have to swing around and attack them from all sides. The Parts and Rangers will go straight at it. So we'll hide this one down here, and this one will swing around. So this one should be hidden from quite a bit of fire. Okay, so these guys were broken again. I don't think this unit will stand for much longer either. Unless I actually tell them to uh, set up on the wind. That's not actually going to do it any better. Um, put you guys along this side of the wall. So these guys moving in really thick column formation. Which, if we remember the bridge battle, that's not a good plan. Okay, they're closing in. The punch of rangers. Oh, and most of the shots are hitting hit either the uh, the hill or the fence, and the unit is completely overrun by my Parks and Rangers. This one's got really beat up by the howitzer shots. Ah uh, shit, all the all my line infantry is now gone. Parts and Rangers, I thought they would deal with these guys a lot more quickly than uh, than they're doing. They're going to be assaulted by yet another unit. We'll send in the vendettes. And then I have a another one. Oh, I have both of them over here. See if we can't get rid of these uh, last ones. The partisans will just ride straight at it. There's so many of them that uh, just is 114 volunteers clearly won't be able to stand against them. 
when there's so many partisans coming at them. This one gets charged. There's not that much difference in between the uh, partisans in the way they dress compared to the regular cavalry. The only thing is one of them is a lot worse. Okay, let's poke us in the canister. See if we can shoot away that flag. And I get the unit up here ready to fire on them. Well, my cavalry is not actually doing that hot, or at least the one do fighting the big unit, where my dragoons are actually retreating. But we'll amass and charge this one. Oh, look at the uh, really nice formation they're doing now. Right now, I'm aiming kind of down right here with the canister. It's extreme range for the canister though, so... Oh, the cavalry has yet to actually win this fight. And there's still like half that unit left. I imagine... Oh, it's the breaking now, finally. I was a bit worried there because... Um, if all these cavalry would have uh, gone, would have uh, died away, then clearly there would have been no chance for me to win the battle. But now we have cavalry am amassing on all sides and canister being shot at them and the little unit of uh, 36 uh, volunteers. And soon I'll give the order for all the cavalry to uh, sweep in and sweep the swarms away. But first, of course, we need to tell the howitzers to hold fire, but I think we'll let them fire one more time. Uh, I think the unit from the back is the one that's going to start off the charge. This one's going to drag them on a little bit. Ah, uh, right, they've stopped. They're, I think they're turning to face that unit. We'll attack from all sides. Okay, they're facing the partisans. But this, these guys will able to hit them first. And they're unable to respond with rifle fire. And as they're busy fighting this one, all the rest of the cavalry turns up attacking them in the back. And they're done for. You can't even see the infantry unit anymore. There's so much cavalry. And you can see them rapidly losing men. And there, they're gone. And victory is mine. Very nicely done. Very nicely done indeed. Probably if I just had done cavalry charges to begin with, I'd probably um, have done the battle quicker uh, and also suffered less casualties. But um, yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. Anyways, let's go back to the campaign map, shall we? Right, so looking at what we lost, I actually lost 777. So that's, isn't that what you like win, um, like if you get three sevens on a like slot machine, that's, that's a victory or not victory, but you win some money then, don't you? That's like one of the higher ones, isn't it? Um, 
but that's about half of the army I sent in. Um, so we have about 700 men of ours remaining, while they have about 400 remaining. Hopefully, ah, I was gonna say hopefully they're destroyed. They all, they had, a, they still have a lot of chevrons. So it wasn't really a victory that decided anything, but they're so far away from being uh, in friendly territory that I doubtful they will be able to uh, replenish in time for me to actually be able to replenish and destroy them. Let's go ahead and end turn and uh, see what the enemy has up their sleeves. So for some reason they're moving a lot of troops around there, but they're not actually gathering it into a substantial army. They're sending some reinforcements to um, help. I thought they were going to help in actually um, Governor's Residence. Where is this? Kansas Territory. This is not good. We'll move our troops back. We'll replenish this army and then I need to replenish I don't need to replenish this one, but I need to replenish Lee's army. That's going to cost me 4,000. And can I recruit anything funky here? Some... Um, some 12 pound Napoleons. They're probably pretty good, because the enemy, the enemy, when the enemy used the Napoleons, they absolutely destroyed me, didn't they? We're going to upgrade this just to make sure that we can hold it. Uh, American Civil War. Uh, Ulysses S. Grant emerges. Workers. And we got a port. And Woodstock farmland has been upgraded. So these guys are content with sitting there. I don't even need to actually go back to the town, do I? Possibly I do just to keep them from revolting. Um... And then, let's see, we'll merge these troops. So. Oh, the Ready Irish. I'll remove one of these, and then we have room for the Irish. And then he'll start off his march Impossible. to go through here. And the Irish will catch up to him. The movement's really slow, so I wish I could build some rails there. In some of the conquered provinces, we should be able to build rails. I've actually built rails there. So I can't. Um, a farm? Not really necessary. For some reason, um, Grant, which just emerged, um, leaves Chicago undefended. Which means that Beauregard can just march in. Demand the surrender, and there goes Chicago, Illinois. So Illinois has fallen, and it's a pretty big, it's a pretty big province, but also it's a pretty important province because it's got mine, and mine give a lot of cash. So the reinforcement coming by George Meade, so with some really good troops as well, two units of Pennsylvania Bucktails and the 52nd New York Rangers being sent forwards to actually... It wouldn't have been enough given how, the, how large my army is, but... Um, it would have definitely helped. The thing is, they wouldn't have reached in time anyways. Um, right. They're splitting... Uh, they have a lot of these smaller units, which I don't like. Why don't they just move? everything together so I can destroy them in one battle. Hopefully they'll do that. So we'll go ahead and end turn and see what they do. So hopefully they'll go ahead and march all of this into one army. But they don't seem like they want to do that. They just run about like idiots. And they, I, I don't know why they're bypassing Chicago area. Why they're not going towards that area? Oh, we have a rebellion? Um, so Grant goes ahead. He, well, obviously Grant is gonna... He goes and burns the farmland of Missouri. 
We have a rebellion on our hand. So, the Kansas Territory is so unhappy that they spawn McKellen and another Grant. And they spawn a lot more units. So, uh, Hood definitely got some problems on his hands. Trying to keep this province under control as uh, they rebel against him. Uh, McKellen versus Scott. In Washington, the surge of popularity of George... General George McKellen helps promote him to challenge his superior, the legendary General Winfield Scott. Um, age was a factor. President Lincoln, blah blah blah, something something. And Winfield submitted a request to retire. Right. Stuff. And stuff. Path of blocked. We've got a rebellion. We've got a new port in Virginia. It's gonna be a trade port. Um, ancillary gained. Mistress. Happiness for the nobility. Minus two for the middle classes. And we built a army staff corps and some rails. So this should be a allow me. Yes, this allows me to recruit Greg's brigade, Hood's Texans, Confederate Orphan Brigade. And what's this? Confederate Stonewall Brigade. Obviously Stonewall needs the Stonewall Brigade. So we're gonna get three of those. And... I guess we're gonna try to get the other ones as well. But the thing is... Um, Jackson is already delayed on his campaign to the point where the Union troops are already filtrating into this province which is not nice we're gonna build rails here to make sure that we can move faster and I think I'm gonna build rails here no we're gonna build rails here this area is probably important to move back and forth through thing is they don't really have I mean they have all these small shit armies can't they just amass them into one big unit so I can actually uh, fight a proper army. Ah, oh, goddammit, not only... Classed. We didn't even destroy them. And then we'll have to see about the rebels as well. Hmm. Um, given that, though, we've had a battle. I've shown a, quite a bit of campaign movements and stuff. So I think I don't have enough in this episode to make another battle so what we'll do is uh, yeah we'll end it here so hopefully you guys enjoyed it and hopefully for the next one we'll actually get a substantial battle otherwise maybe I should just handicap myself by deleting some troops to give a more equal battle to the Union um, the thing is, they've still got a lot of places left. So they've got, like, um, they've got New York, West New York, Central New York, Albany, New York. So they've got three New Yorks left. They've got Philadelphia, which is a big town, which is very unhappy. So maybe they're, they're really, what's this? Clamor for reform and war variness. So... The Union is about to collapse just because they're losing, t they're losing territory and they're losing people to the point where the people are fed up with the situation, ready to revolt. So if I keep, if I keep pounding the Union, they might just surrender. I, I mean, um, in reality, if we have a sim, uh, if we had something like this. The Union will would have probably um, sued for peace, uh, I think, at this point. Having lost DC would have been a great blow to the nation's morale. Um, the fact that we uh, basically did a reverse split. So, historically, what happened was that the Union split the Confederacy in two. And in this case, we split the Union in two. Uh, it's kind of shit territories of Nebraska and Iowa, Minnesota, but still, it splits it in two. Uh, they still control a lot of the very populous area like New York, 
Philadelphia, Boston, and so forth. Um, so I'm not entirely sure how we'll do this. The thing is, I think if this ends early, we just say... I, I know I said I was about to say, like, goodbye, but I, then I keep talking for, like, five minutes. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll try to get the, the uh, sub mod in again, and then I'll do battle against the AI, where I'll do like a bat confederates against Mexicans, and then confederates against uh, British, as as we would invade, <laughs> invade and take over Canada. Um, since there's no ships in this, I can't really go over anywhere, and the thing is, without the sub mod, all these sort of smaller factions, their troops, I mean their troops, they actually look like this, like they look like the uh, 1600s um, frontiersmen, and they look like colonial militia, and these guys do not look like British uh, sort of stovepipe soldiers, they look like uh, the regular empire units, and these are actually uh, Native American um, horsemen, so actually fighting them on the campaign map is not that great of a thing. Um, so yeah, anyways, hopefully you guys in still enjoyed this, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!